Hi, I'm Juber and welcome back to the NSG server. Last time, we set up our villager breeder, got full diamond gear, and then killed the dragon. This time, we are going to do our best to get a good villager trading setup going. When I signed back onto the server post-dragon defeat, it was time to set up the first leg in our server-wide easter egg hunt. I didn't want to make the first one too difficult, so I decided to go with a simple scavenger hunt. A signvenger hunt. A scavenger sign? Basically, I put a series of signs, each pointing to the next, each with one coordinate on them showing where I actually left the egg. I honestly doubt anyone is going to find this egg accidentally. They would have to load this chunk and also stare up into the sky, both of which feel pretty unlikely to me, even though this is pretty close to spawn. And no one did find it accidentally. Gentoo Gamer spent an entire stream following the clues and retrieving the egg, so he will get to set up the next egg hunt. Here is the spark notes of what happened, and you can find his info in the description. Spawn. Sign. Oh, sign. What is your wisdom? Are they up here? Oh. I have to get up there? Ah, dang it. Ah, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. I landed on my boat. Oh, we're right here. Oh. Ah, we did it. A little insight into how I make videos is I had like 30 minutes of footage of me just killing skeletons over at my skeleton grinder, and I have no idea why. I guess I needed a bunch of bone meal or bows? One of life's great mysteries, I suppose. My closest server mate, Rigbite, link in the description of course, was having some trouble with an errant iron golem and he asked me for assistance in safely ridding himself of the issue. I think the world would be a better place if it had more people like Mr. Rogers. So in an attempt to be the best neighbor I could, I walked over to Rigbite's base and slaughtered the golem with my bow. In return, he gave me way more iron than I could have gotten from one golem. But honestly, I was just trying to be neighborly. After I returned to my base, I wanted to get started on my first real build of the season, my villager trading hall. Well, the trademark of any good Juber build is hours of resource gathering. This build only needs, let me check my notes, 35 stacks of dark oak logs. Welp. While I was working on that, I mentioned to the cavalry, links in the description, that I didn't have a fortune pick anymore. I didn't tell him that the only one I ever had was gold and it didn't work. But anyways, he was nice enough to fly by and drop off a spare one he got while end busting. I wish he had a more fitting name. You know, one appropriate for someone who comes out of nowhere to help out all the time. I'll see if I can think of anything. I like to include the little bits in my videos that the normal Let's Play format leaves out. Probably because these bits are super boring. But for instance, the current clip is me crafting for 30 minutes straight. And then I realized that I miscalculated and I actually needed more dark oak. But chopping wood was getting kind of old, so I decided to trade in my plaid for a compass and do a little cartography. I locked these maps so I can track the progress of my base every few episodes or so. I felt like it would be ungracious of me not to take advantage of the pick that the cavalry had given to me, but I'm real tired of going up and down this staircase to get to my mines. I would honestly recommend installing a bubble vader and a drop shaft to your mines as soon as you can. It's a small convenience, but it makes me much more likely to actually go mine. So I go mine. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to mine we go. With a fortune pick, the wealth grows quick. Please, no copyright Disney, yo. Something I noticed was that my villager breeder wasn't working, even though at this point I had spent hours at my base doing my best lumberjack impression. So my solution was to awkwardly stare at my villagers to see if they would make a baby. Spoilers, they didn't. I actually did fix this later, but that's only because I was also breaking Rigbite stuff as well. The problem you ask? I was sleeping too much. 
Well, too fast actually. So villagers need to claim a bed in order to do villager things. And apparently I was sleeping so fast and so soon after sunset every day that my villagers didn't get a chance to get in bed. So apparently the early to bed part of that old proverb is not true in Minecraft. So I ran into some troubles in the nether. I fell into the lava, was able to get out without dying, and then my computer crashed immediately afterwards. Pretty unfortunate, but at least I was still alive. Then I logged back in, checked my inventory, and realized that I basically had died because I was probably too far from land to make it, I didn't have any blocks, and I didn't bring any ender pearls. But, like always, the cavalry showed up and saved my butt. And it gave me a potion of fire resistance, you know, because he probably assumed I was going to fall in the lava again. After that embarrassing ordeal, I headed out of the nether to grab some spruce wood for my trading hall, because using different kinds of wood together always works out. Safely back at my base, I continued to gather resources. I needed a bunch of terracotta for my build, and I conveniently live in a mesa biome. I'm trying to be careful to preserve the aesthetic of the plateau though, so I'm going to try to get all my terracotta from hollowing out the inside of this hill. With extreme caution, I return to the nether to collect some crimson logs. Safely back in the overworld once again, I went off in search of a supply of string. I knew about an above ground spider spawner I had seen near spawn, so I knew which direction to head. I might make a permanent spider farm later, but for now, I just need a really simple setup so I can get about a stack of string. Rigbite asked for some help setting up his skelly spawner, and while I am by no means an expert, I did very recently set up my own, so I gave him a hand. Again, he showed his gratitude with iron. You know, if he's planning on selling iron later, this could be a very shrewd strategy to get me reliant on his supply and then BAM, he starts charging me. With the realization that I would never be able to build my trading hall if I didn't finish getting all my building materials together, I started stripping logs. Let me tell you, this is top-notch, riveting, seat-of-your-pants Minecraft. This might be the pinnacle of gameplay. But finally, I had all of my materials together, over here, but I need them over there. This would be a simple problem if I had shulker boxes, but I'm poor. So instead I had to do this. And now I could actually start the build, so I started preparing the foundation for my trading hall. And I immediately realized that it was in the wrong place, so I moved like five blocks and then prepared the foundation again. So my goal here is to make a whole village for my villagers. Which, now that I've said out loud, I'm realizing that I took them out of a village to bring them here just to build a new village. And it all seems a little pointless and oh my god what am i doing with my life i realized that i needed slime because i needed sticky pistons not regular pistons my initial thought was that i could farm some in a swamp at night but uh where are they my backup plan was to trade slime with mystery man links in the description but he was afk i didn't record it but I definitely spent a lot of time just desperately shouting into the void, begging for a slime trade. Anyways, he finally came back and agreed to trade with me. One stack of redstone blocks for one stack of slime blocks. Seemed fair to me. But the only thing is, he said his slime blocks were at his other base. Where, where are we going? At some point, I remembered what John Mulaney said about not letting kidnappers take you to a secondary location. And at that point is when I started to get scared. Luckily, everything was above board. We made the transaction, and then he sent me back to my base across the Great Nether Railroad. Slime acquired, I got back to building on my trading hall. I am using a design by Logical Geek Boy. Links in the, you know what? Just assume if I mention someone that they're gonna be links in the description. The design will allow me to easily load my villagers into their cells and zombify them later for discounts on trading. This hall is just for my librarians in order to exploit them for their easy access to enchanted books, so it seemed appropriate to make the inside library themed. At this point, you might be asking why I decided to build a village that's going to look like this in a mesa biome. 
Well, come on, I obviously have a plan, and I can't wait for you guys to see how this turns out in the end. Is, is this thing off? Good, I'm so screwed. I have no plan. Why did I decide to build this here? This is going to look terrible. As you can see from the several cuts that happened while building this trading hall, it took me a while to do, so I was not able to complete it in one sitting. But now it is done. I'm very happy with the result. All I have to do is fill it up with villagers and trade with them. Oh god, I forgot to come up with a plan to get emeralds. We interrupt this program to bring you a breaking news alert. There has been a breach at the sheep containment facility. The problem is severe, but authorities are assuring us that they have everything under control. This is when I figured out why my villager breeder wasn't working, and I fixed it by not sleeping and instead just AFKing for an hour. So, now that I had a steady stream of villagers, I just had to get the villagers from the ocean into the minecart. This was my first attempt, and while it was successful, I am certain that we can do better, especially because this was actually terrible and I hated it and did I mention that it was terrible. I went back to the drawing board and came up with what is still a super janky, mostly temporary setup, but it was way better than before and requires almost no interaction from me. I just have to break the boat and push a button. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your part. Now that we had some villagers in our trading hall, and I remember that I still didn't have anything to trade with them, I did some research and read that farmer villagers are a good source of emeralds. Time to build another house, starting with some more dark oak, of course. We also needed some lime dye, which short term, I think the best way to farm is to get some sea pickles. They grow in coral reefs, and the closest coral reef I know about is at Mystery Man's base, so I headed that way. I grabbed a pickle, headed back, and realized that you need to grow them on coral blocks. So I headed back to Mystery Man's base again, picked up a single coral block, went back home again, accidentally broke the coral block, so I went back to Mystery Man's base again and got a bunch of coral blocks. I headed home, finally managed to farm some pickles, and lamented all the time I lost trying to get one pickle to become many. Okay, so full disclosure, there was actually an additional trip that I didn't document where I got all the way to Mystery Man's base and didn't bring my Silk Touch pickaxe. For real, the pickle saga was like an hour and a half. If I got paid to play Minecraft, I would have been fired after this. Back to the resource grind, more terracotta. And now that we had all the necessary resources, again, we started to build our trading hall, again, but smaller and greener this time. This build is thematically similar to the other one because as stated earlier, I moved the villagers here from their village to make them a new village. And then I finished the new farming hall. And I realized in order to use the farmers to produce emeralds, I need something to trade with them. So I went back to the internet, and the internet told me pumpkins and melons. Okay internet, looks like I need to make one more house. Which, of course, requires the collection of dark oak logs. Some more terracotta. Some more general purpose wood for note blocks and pistons. Some glowstone, which I was terrified to get after my experience earlier. The last ingredient I needed for my farm was melon seeds, which I had to search through the jungle for like 30 minutes to find. And then I began construction on what, one way or another, was to be the last addition to my village for this video. As the farming hall was already the color of melons, I figured I would make my melon and pumpkin farm the color of pumpkins. I didn't come up with a farm's design myself, but I learned it so long ago I do not remember who came up with it. It's kind of expensive, but it's pretty easy to build, and pretty efficient, and it fits nicely in a house-shaped cube. What the sheep? Now that I have a villager trading hall, a group of farmers I can use for emeralds, and a pumpkin and melon farm that I can use to trade with my farmers, I was able to get my hands on some mending books, which means I can finish this pick, and it means I can use my elytra again. But first, I have to repair it over at my skelly grinder. And now, all is well in the world. Minecraft without flight, 
doesn't even feel like Minecraft to me anymore. I've become so reliant on the elytra. That being said, if I want to continue flying, I'm going to need to address my very limited supply of fireworks. But maybe we'll save that for another day. I feel like enough changed around my base to justify another map update. And I think with that, we can wrap up this episode. I still have a lot of trading to do before I get my villagers where I want them, but I have the infrastructure in place and I'm happy with what I accomplished today. Thank you so much for watching this video and please do whatever combination of liking, subscribing, and commenting that you feel comfortable with. See ya!